Hi, it's Kyle from Bitewing Games, and today we're going to learn how to play Rescuing Robin Hood. Rescuing Robin Hood is a collaborative game for one to five players that takes about 20 minutes per player. It is designed by Bryce Brown and published by Castillo Games. Let's take a look inside the box. There are character cards for Robin Hood, the Sheriff, band leaders, villagers, and guards. Scenario setup cards and challenge cards for an expert mode. Nottingham Castle, the major oak tree. Skill tokens for scouting, prayer, and cooking. Attribute tracker cards and cubes, and a first player token. So, on to the gameplay. The point of the game is to win, and you win by rescuing Robin Hood. The game will take place over five days or rounds. The first four days you'll be rescuing villagers from guards. You'll be adding these villagers to your team, all building up to this fifth day where you will have a final assault on Nottingham. To begin the game, give the first player token to the player who most recently took a walk in a park or the forest. Set the skill tokens within reach of all players. Set the major oak above the play area with Robin Hood, the Sheriff, and Castle card nearby. Divide and shuffle the blue guards and red guards into two piles. Separate and shuffle the villagers into four piles based on their medallion, bronze, silver, gold, and no medallion. Place the Sherwood Forest card nearby. Each player is dealt, face down, eight villagers with no medallion. This is their personal band of villagers. Each player is also given an attribute tracker and two cubes of each color to keep track of their skills. Shuffle and deal two of the larger band leader cards to each player. Each player will select one of the two band leaders to keep and the others put back in the box. In a five player game, give two of the players two cards. The ones that they choose not to keep, shuffle back in and deal the rest out to the players so that you have enough cards to go around. For the number of players, randomly select a card for each of the five rounds or days. So for a three player game, select a day one and two card, a day three and four card, and a day five card that all say three player setup. Stack the cards with day one on top and day five on bottom. You're now ready to start day one. Along with a special rule for the round, the setup card will also show you how to set up the guards and villagers. In this example, set out a bronze and silver villager face up to the left of seven blue guards face down. A bronze villager and three blue guards, another bronze villager and three guards, and two silver villagers by nine blue guards. These cards represent four groups or rows of villagers you can rescue. Reveal the top card of each guard stack, leaving the rest face down. Always reveal the top guard card on any of the rows. So as you set up, reveal the top card on each of the rows. Anytime you defeat some of the guards and the next guard is face down, flip him face up before your next attack. All players will now draw and reveal the top four cards from their villager deck. Add up all the attributes from your villagers plus your band leader and keep track of those on your personal tracker. For example, Maid Marion reveals these four villagers. She has 12 wit, 5 stealth, 3 brawn, and 1 jolliness. She will also take any skill tokens indicated. In this case, 1 scouting, 1 cookery, and 2 prayer. Next, each player will get to make 2 attacks right in a row. So the first player will plan their attack and then actually attack. Then they'll plan their second attack and make their second attack. That's the end of their turn and the player to their left will go. Once all players have made the two attacks, that's the end of a day. So let's learn how to actually rescue these villagers. Before making an attack, players can use their skill tokens and jolliness. You don't have to, but tokens are discarded at the end of the round and all of the attributes are reset to zero. So it's kind of a use it or lose it scenario. Jolliness is essentially a wild skill. Before attacking, you can choose which of your attributes to increase. For example, if you had three jolliness, you could increase your brawn by three, or you could increase each attribute by one. Any jolliness you don't use is passed on to the next player at the end of your turn. Skill tokens can be used by any player during any player's planning phase. So there's both the planning phase and the attacking phase. We'll explain that a little bit more later. But the three skill tokens are scouting, cookery, and prayer. Scouting lets you reveal two guard cards anywhere in one row. Cookery gives any player of your choice plus two to their wit, 
stealth, or brawn. Unlike the other tokens, this is not discarded at the end of the round. Rather, it's flipped over and becomes mead, being held for future rounds. Mead will be used similar to cookery, but it gives one player plus one jolliness. The prayer tokens can be used in one of two ways. One prayer token can be used to move any guard, face up or face down, to any spot in another row. Or you can use two prayer tokens to completely remove one guard, again face up or face down, entirely from this round. You'll just set it to the side. Uh, the prayer tokens don't have to just come from one player. If you have a prayer token and I have a prayer token, we can combine those to have two prayer tokens to discard a guard. For example, you could spend one prayer to move this guard to the bottom row. Or you could spend two prayer tokens to remove him entirely. Now that you've used any of your skill tokens and jolliness that you choose to use, you're ready to make an actual attack. There are three different ways you can attack. You can attack using your wit, your stealth, or your brawn. To attack with wit, choose one row of guards and attack the first guard on the right. If your wit is greater than or equal, you successfully outwit them. Set them to the side nearby. You can either push your luck and reveal and try to outwit the next guard, or you can discard any guards you have outwitted so far. If you choose to continue the attack, reveal the next guard, and if your wit is still greater than or equal to the guards you have set aside, you can again choose to continue or end the attack. If the guard's wit becomes greater than yours, you lose and all guards return in order to where they were. Attacking with stealth, choose a row of guards to attack. Select any number of guards from this row, face up or face down, in any of the positions. Reveal all these guards. If your stealth is greater than or equal to the guards, you win and all guards are discarded. If your stealth is less than the guards, your attack fails and all guards return to their locations, remaining face up. Attacking with Brawn. Brawn is an all or nothing. Choose a row of guards to attack. Reveal all guards in that row. If your Brawn is equal to or greater, discard all those guards and you win. If your Brawn is less, you lose the attack. Discarded guards will be shuffled back into the main deck for the next round. If you defeat all guards next to any villagers, those villagers are placed next to the major oak tree to be recruited at the end of the round. So you will choose one of these three ways to attack. After your attack, you will get another chance to prepare by using any skill tokens or your jolliness. At that point, you will choose one of the other attributes and attack in that method. Let's look at an example. Maid Marion attacks using wit. She outwits the first guard. She chooses to keep going. She outwits the next guard. She reveals another guard. Her wit is still too higher, but she decides to quit while she's ahead. She ends her attack and discards the guards. She decides to use stealth for her next attack. Before she attacks, she decides to use cookery to increase her stealth by two. She selects the face-up guard and one other guard. Their total stealth is eight, which is greater than her seven. So the guards return to their positions. She has one jolliness and three brawn left over, which are passed on to the player to her left, who now begins her turn. Stealth and wit are not passed on, only brawn and jolliness. Once each player has made their two attacks, it's time to recruit those rescued villagers, beginning with the start player and going clockwise. Select one of the rescued villagers to add to your hand of villagers that you just used. Players can choose to pass. Keep taking villagers until all the villagers are taken or all players have passed. Extra villagers that were not taken are placed into Sherwood Forest. Clean up the round by shuffling all guard cards together. Place any villagers that were not rescued in Nottingham Castle. Discard your hand of villagers, including the ones you just barely recruited, to your own personal discard pile. Discard skill tokens, except cookery, which will be flipped to mead and can be used in subsequent rounds. Set all attributes back to zero. Pass the first player token clockwise and set up for the next day. Day two will look exactly like day one as far as setup and gameplay. At the end of round two, look at all of your villager cards. Select just eight of those cards to take into round three and four. The others will be placed into Sherwood Forest. Shuffle your eight cards, draw four for day three, switch the setup card to day three and four setup, and play days three and four the exact same as you played days one and two. At the end of day four, look through your villagers and select just four of them to take into the fifth and final round, the showdown against Nottingham. All other cards will be placed into Sherwood Forest. 
On to day five. Set up the battlefield as shown on the card, placing Nottingham Castle on top of the first row. Don't reveal the top card on the top row. The castle is the first card to be on that row. Place Robin Hood and any imprisoned villagers next to the lower row of cards. To win the game, you need to free Robin Hood. If you free him, as a bonus quest, you can try to imprison the Sheriff of Nottingham. Each player will reveal their four selected villagers, adding attributes like usual. Gameplay is about the same for round five. A few differences. You get to choose who the first player is. You must defeat the guards from the top row down, beginning with Nottingham Castle. The player who defeats Nottingham Castle receives a bonus of jolliness. That bonus is count up the number of villagers in Sherwood Forest, divide it by three, round it down, and give that number of jolliness to the player who defeated Nottingham Castle. Once you have defeated Nottingham Castle and all the guards on the top row, you'll move down to the other rows. Once you've defeated all of those guards, you've freed Robin Hood and you've won the game. But if that isn't enough, you can keep going and try to imprison the Sheriff of Nottingham. To do that, flip Robin Hood to his active side. The current player adds him to their band, adding Robin Hood's attributes to their player board. That player can use one additional attack, but it still has to be one they haven't already used this round. If you defeat all of the guards and the Sheriff, you've not only won the game, but you've imprisoned the Sheriff of Nottingham. That's not easy. Good work. There's also a solo mode and an advanced mode, but I'm getting really tired of talking, so you'll have to check the rulebook out for those. I'm going to be posting my personal thoughts on the game soon, so check back shortly for that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Until next time.